Bienvenidos Hola. a Lightspeed Spanish. We are here with the very famous Steve Kaufman, the man of many languages. And we're going to have a, a nice short interview with Steve and, and pick his brain so that we know the best ways of learning language. Because if anybody knows how to learn languages, it's Steve. Hello, Steve. Hello, hello. I'm happy to be here. Hola. I wish I were in Spain. I love being in Spain. Don't come okay. just yet. Just no, come just, a little bit later. Yeah. yeah. A little bit later. Okay. Okay. S save me some food and some wine. Yeah. <laughs> well, little, Steve, thank you very much for, for connecting with us. And um, we've got some questions that we want to ask you. Yeah. So you're okay. open to questions? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I must apologize. You know, I imagine you do a lot of interviews and... I would guess that you're going you're gonna to hear very similar questions over and over again, but I've tried to develop some questions that might just be a little bit different. Sure. Okay. But this one's not. The first one's not different. Right. So based on, on the learning that you've done, what would you say would be the top three ways? If you could only choose three ways to learn a language, right. what would you do? You know... I think the number one thing, be, because language learning depends so much on the attitude of the learner, uh, you know, how interested is the learner in the language? Uh, does the language have, does the learner have the confidence that they can learn? Uh, and of course, it also depends on the amount of time we spend with the language. So I think the number one thing is to find a way or ways to enjoy learning the language. If you enjoy learning it, you're going to have a positive attitude towards learning. You're going to spend enough time and you will succeed. And it'll carry you through that period when you think you're not making any progress because we all have that, all of us. It seems like we're not getting anywhere. And of course, if you stay with the language, if you enjoy the language, you eventually get there. So that would be my biggest is to find a way to enjoy it. Okay. Excellent. Okay, and how how do you find the motivation? You know, when you get to the plateau moments and you feel like we're not advancing anymore, how do you find the inspiration to continue? Well, um, see, I um, okay. When I start in a language, uh, I particularly the last five six years, I use these these mini stories that we have at Link, where there's a lot of repetition, so it's not intrinsically all that interesting. But because the language is new and I'm quite interested in discovering the language and the structures of the language and the words in the language, I don't mind the, the repetition. So for a period of two or three months, I can put up with that. And that's typically not where we get into the doldrums. That's not where the sort of, you know, plateau happens. The plateau happens when we go from the sort of beginner content, whatever it might be, and we try to move towards sort of a, a level of fluency so that we can understand movies and we can join a conversation with native speakers and can understand what they're saying and can actually participate and stuff. And it just takes a long, long time to get there. And what I do is I try to find content of interest. And, and that is much easier to do today than ever before because uh, I can import newspaper articles into Link. I can import YouTube videos where they have subtitles. It comes in as a lesson. I can go to Netflix. So I, but or I'll buy an audiobook for which I can find the corresponding ebook. Ebook. So I end up in a situation where I'm not really watching myself, like how how well am I doing? Or no, I'm interested in whatever it is that I'm listening to and reading. And because a big part to me of of language learning is listening and reading, you have to get the language in you. It, once you have a certain level of comprehension and vocabulary, you can engage with people uh, and you'll struggle at first, but you'll actually progress quite quickly because you understand what they're saying. If you don't have comprehension, you, you can't talk about much. So uh, to, I, I find that I, I am confident that as I continue listening and reading, and of course, I, I, you know, in a reading online or on my iPad, I have online dictionaries if I'm in Link or if I'm not in Link. So I can, I can look up words that I don't understand, forget them right away, but they show up again. And I just keep on going uh, with things of interest to me. And I know from experience that I will eventually reach a level that's more satisfying. Never completely satisfying because we're never completely satisfied with our level. Okay, I warn you up front. <laughs> Very true. It's true. I've got a, I've got a question about... Um... Obviously, you speak a lot in different, lots of languages. You've had lots of experience 
talking with people in each language. Do you find that your personality changes according to the language that you're speaking? Oh, I think to some extent. I think it's it's somewhat superficial, but it, you do because I think when you learn another language, you're actually you have to imitate, right? You are imitating a part of the culture of another language. I mean, of another culture. The language is part of the culture of Spain, of China, of Japan. So as you imitate, and the better you imitate the language, that aspect of their culture, of course it helps if you, you're playing a role here. You're a, an actor, you're playing a role. So to the extent that you, uh, you can do that, you, yeah, you're gonna change your personality, but I think it's superficial. Fundamentally, you remain the same person but some gestures may change and you might be more <laughs> argumentative or less argumentative depending on the culture. Yeah, more indirect if you're, say, speaking Japanese. But uh, fundamentally, you call, your, your character doesn't change, but some superficial aspects of your personality uh, should change. Sure, well, I'm really pleased you mentioned that because my next question was, in your experience, which language it contains the most of passion and 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 kind of emotion as you speak it. Okay, well, I mean, uh, you know, take the Swedes for example. If you've ever been around Swedes, you know, every so often it's just as if the conversation dies. You know, they're just not very passionate. You know, it's aha. Uh -huh. So that's one extreme. Another extreme is when I listen to my Arabic podcasts, I mean, you, they're always all talking at the same time. And so when I look for Arabic podcasts, I look for Arabic podcasts where there's only two people, because if there's four, <laughs> I'm lost and they sound pretty passionate. I don't understand them very well yet, but they sound pretty passionate. Um, I guess, you know, bringing it around to Spain, I don't find the Spanish, at least when they're talking, they're not amongst the most passionate. I find they're quite uh, rational, not, not, not so passionate, not so passionate. Now, I can't speak for all the countries of Latin America. Uh, I haven't had as much experience with them. But uh, everyone is passionate to some degree. I always think these differences are all superficial. Uh, I think you can find passionate people everywhere. Uh, you can find you know, or people who are not passionate people get, you have uh, everything from extreme left-wing people to extreme right-wing people in, in, in every country. So, so, but at least superficially, some uh, cultures seem to be, I mean, the Japanese are not given to expressing a lot of passion when they're speaking. So it depends, it varies. But they would, if they got very passionate about some subject, I'm sure they would. Oh, I'm sure. I have a question mm -hmm. about um, language speed. Mm -hmm. You know, because when when you learn another language, and I've yes. heard this a lot, do you, do you think that that language is really fast? Right. And also when those people learn your language, it's fast. So we always have the right. perception that they speak fast. Right. Is there a language that is faster or are they, are they all virtually more or less the same speed? I, I don't know the answer to that question. I suspect that, that someone has studied it <laughs> and that you could probably find an answer. But I think the differences in speed would be less important than the perception we have that, that a language is spoken very quickly. So, um, and in some languages, for example, in French, where you get this sort of liaison effect where you know, the, the last consonant slides into the vowel of the next word. People have trouble figuring out where one word ends and the next word begins. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, subjectively, I think Mexican Spanish is, is, is uh, probably doesn't sound as fast as Spanish from Spain, because in Spain they kind of, whereas the Mexicans are more up and down. Um, you know, similarly, the, the Brazilians are more up and down, whereas the, the Portuguese, they, they chew half their vowels. So different things. I do remember that when I started learning Chinese, we were listening to this series of stories. And I thought to myself at the time, you know, this is not natural speed. This is deliberately fast to make it difficult for us. That was, I remember thinking that to myself. They can't possibly be speaking that quickly. This is impossible. Why are they torturing us? And of course, when I eventually learned Chinese, I realized that that wasn't the case. So I think it's often a matter of perception. 
And obviously, I, I, I think people think just as fast in all these different languages, and some people speak faster than others. And the biggest thing is that uh, when we're learning a language, it's an advantage to hear it more slowly. But at some point, we have to, you know, speed up because typically many of the natives speak quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. I agree. Okay, excellent. Well, I've got a, the last couple of questions are kind of uh, okay. linked. So, are you still learning languages now? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I am now on my 19th and 20th language languages, which is Arabic and Persian, and I'm doing the two of them at the same time. I started out trying to do three because, you know, I'm interested in different parts of the world. So I've got a number of Asian languages or Romance languages or whatever, Slavic languages. And so I thought the Middle East, that's a whole interesting area. And I thought if I do Arabic and then I leave it for two years and then I go, because it takes a while to learn these languages, right? And then I go and do Persian and I'll lose my Arabic. So I said, I'll do three at the same time. But that was too much. And a major obstacle is the writing system. So I said, I'll focus on Arabic and Persian so I can get more comfortable reading the Arabic script. So right now I'm working on Arabic and Persian. And I've dropped Turkish for now, but I did some Turkish, enough to have a sense of what, how the language works, but I've dropped it. So that brings me to, to the last question. Do you think you'll ever stop? Well, I enjoy it, so why would I stop? Um, you know, it, it adds a level of confusion. Obviously, uh, there are languages that I have learned recently that I would have trouble speaking now, like Greek or Romanian. I learned them before going to the country. And I would love to go back and improve them. But obviously, if I'm learning a new language, I can't be improving languages that I already speak. But on the other hand, it's so interesting to discover, you know, you know, if, if I'm follow, I follow different people on Twitter and up pops something in Persian or up pops something in Arabic, and I can actually understand a lot of what they're saying. And those people come alive in a way that they don't if you don't speak their language. They become, you know, you fill them out a little bit as, as people. They're not just some place on the map and sort of the Arabs or something. You actually get a sense. So it's fun. Why wouldn't I continue? I, I, I would like to probably... But it'll be a while, Arabic and Persian. It'll be a while. It takes a while. It takes time to learn languages. It's not overnight. Yeah. Absolutely, it does. I imagine. Well, Steve, that's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for your time. We do appreciate you uh, linking up with this. Okay, and I want to say, sorry, and I just want to say, I think it's great what you're doing. I think that uh, the world of the internet with people bringing language to people, encouraging people to learn languages, I think it's tremendous. It's much more dynamic than the old sort of classroom scenario. And I think Spanish is, is a phenomenal language because of all that the culture has to offer both on the Iberian Peninsula and in, in Latin America, from music to food to movies to you name it. It's an exciting language to learn. So congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And trust me, I could have asked you about 10 more questions. <laughs> Well, we can continue then. So, <laughs> we'll do the, the next yeah, time. we have to do it next time because I've got so okay. many questions. <laughs> that, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.